So I just watched Fidia's response to Gary, his video titled Change, and it's prompted me to make this video about change, um, and whether people can really change or not. Um, I really do feel like this is kind of unexplored territory on here. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there has been some talk about this. Uh, I know Professor Anton has, has um, previously said that he thought that human beings can, can can really change and and that we are the most plastic thing and you know we can we can improve ourselves so much by uh, by disciplining ourselves and I think I think well that's 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 fair and true um, I think that deep down. Our characters are always the same, and that's that's what Schopenhauer thought. And I think the the really interesting thing is that it doesn't seem to be in ethelism. And I'm wondering how is it that um, a philosophy that was born out of those teachings, um, you know, what bits of information have have they acquired in order to uh, completely ignore this. That's what I'm really wondering. Because um, Schopenhauer did not think that people could change, and he he thought that this included our morality, that if someone is bad, they're just bad by nature, and they can't be thought otherwise. And I think that the general reaction to this is is that this isn't true, that um, you know people can change, and you can see reformed criminals and things like that, but Schopenhauer addresses all of this in his philosophy, and he explains exactly why it is that they do this, um, and that they're just stronger motives motives overriding the, the criminal motives, but at the, at the heart of the person, the person did not change. Um, but I, I think what's most interesting is that for Schopenhauer, someone is ethical just because they are by nature compassionate toward other beings, that it has absolutely nothing to do with being rational or needing rational explanation. Isn't that really, really interesting when you look at ethelism and you contrast these two views? Um, because ethelism is clearly about trying to um, reason with people in order, uh, reason with people to make them ethical, which is completely which is not something that Schopenhauer thought was possible. Uh, people are either compassionate or they're not. They can be both compassionate and reasonable, but you cannot impose on you cannot um, impose on them some kind of um, moral code based on reason if they don't have the compassion in place already. So I think that's really interesting um, that for Schopenhauer, a moral act is um, only moral if it has true compassion behind it. So you could be he, he could look at an ethelist uh, who is not having any children, but who is hurting other people otherwise. That he, he doesn't really have empathy for them in their struggle with life, um, and he could, he would look at another person who's kind of a, a bit more mindless um, and who has had children. And see that this person is is very compassionate, um, very compassionate. Sorry, and you know, this person is doing all sorts of things, right? Because they they can't stand to see other people in pain. And he would look at the two, and he would think that the ethicalist is the one who is not ethical, according to 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 his writings, which is really interesting. Um, that for him the key is compassion. It's not reason, and it's not it's it's not obeying the threat of consequences. Because yes, people can be threatened with consequences, of course, but he thought that even so, you can never really change their heart, so to speak, um, and that this threat, which makes makes them act good out of reason and not compassion. Uh, does not make them ethical. Um, so, what this uh, this leads Schopenhauer to is uh, 
being against a code of mor morals that is strictly based on reason. And I think that is exactly what Ephilim is about. It's, it's a code of morals that is based on reason. It says, you know, don't create a need that doesn't need to exist. You know, this kind of um, logical dead end. Uh, and then you, you join that with the it's always a harm to come into the world. And you you give this system to people, the system of thought, and you say, well, you're it's unethical to procreate. But that's never been in Schopenhauer's philosophy. In Schopenhauer, it's it, it's unethical not to feel compassion. It's I think it's really interesting. Um, what is truly the good thing? Um, how can I say this? Well, you see, th this is another point where where him and Kant uh, are divergent. This thing about the code of morals, right? And I guess that's where where their um, Ephilists and, and Schopenhauer are really the most different, because he thought that what is truly the good the good thing is not always the rational thing. That's that's what Kant believed. Um, and something truly bad can be made to seem rational given the circumstances. Now, what does this sound like? Like this whole argument that's been going on lately with the red button. Um, I think that's what Schopenhauer would say. I think he would say that something that this is something truly bad that can be um, made to seem rational given the circumstances, but it is in fact truly bad um, because it's. Um, it's an imposition, right? It's uh, it's uh, it's murder, and it's not based. It's not rooted in compassion. It would be rooted in reason. Um, and that's something that Schopenhauer was against. Um, so for him, doing good, it's is not an act of reason. For ethicists, that's what it is, and it's of course not divine law. Um, either. It's just that some people manage to see the world in an ethical light while others never will. And it's just because of their character and it can't be changed. I think it's very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I'm just wondering why is it that this hasn't... Um, well, why this hasn't been discussed more, I guess, but mostly why there is such a huge contrast between the philosophy of Schopenhauer and the philosophy of the Ephilists. What kind of, of philosophical inquiry was undertaken in order to arrive at these different conclusions? Um, because I can't really picture it. I can't really uh, see how they came to those conclusions, but I would I would like to know how. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think on this subject. Can people really change? And, um, and if so, what can change about them? Is it everything? Can character be changed? Um, or is it inborn? As Schopenhauer thought. Okay, thanks.